When you load a game, most video games show you a list of your saved games to choose from. Today we'll add this behavior to our Sudoku game. Hello everyone. My name is Mike, and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series, we are learning the C++ programming language by making our own Sudoku game. In the last episode, we learned how to use the fstream library to read and write files. And we used this to write an autosave feature to our program. In this episode, we will expand on what we did last time and add a full file directory to our game. This will allow the user to make their own save files. To make a file directory, first we need to make it so that the user can save and load games other than the default autosave file. In our game loop, let's add two new commands, load and save. In these commands, we'll check to see if the user gave a file name, and if so, we'll load or save using that file name. If not, then we'll load or save using a file called default.txt. Now the user can save a game with a file name that they choose, and they can load from that save file at any time when running the program. However, what if the user wants to load a saved game but can't remember what they named the save file? That's where our file directory will come in. Our file directory will contain a list of all of the names of saved games the user has previously created. Let's add a num saves variable and an array of strings called saved games to our program. We'll initialize the num saves variable to zero, and we'll make the size of saved games some arbitrarily large value like a thousand or something. This should give us plenty of room in the array to hold all of the saved games the user should reasonably want to use. Now in our save command, we'll add the file name to the file directory by setting the saved game string at the num saves index to our file name if provided, and incrementing the num saves variable. Note that we should also check to see if the file name is already in the directory so we don't make duplicate entries. We'll also add another command to our game loop called list saves. This will print out all of the save files that we have in our directory so that the user can see what saves there are to choose from. For now, we'll also use the system pause command in order to make it so that the program does not continue until the user responds. This will prevent the screen from clearing immediately after the user runs the list saves command. This is kind of a clunky band-aid solution for now though, and we may explore alternative solutions to this problem later. Now to make our file directory useful, Let's save it to a file when we exit, and load it from that file when the program begins. We'll add some code to write both the num saves variable and the contents of the saved games array to a file called directory.txt in the exit command, and we'll load from that file in the main function before the game loop begins. We now have a working file directory that allows the user to access user-generated save files so we could just call that good enough and leave things here. However, there are a few more things I would like to add here that will make things a little bit better. Firstly, let's alphabetize the list of saved games. To do this, we'll add a void function called alphabetize that accepts both an array of strings and the number of strings that we want to alphabetize. In this function, we will use an algorithm called selection sort to put the list of strings into alphabetical order. It's certainly not the most efficient sorting algorithm, but it's easy to understand and easy to code. If you're feeling brave, you could look up other more efficient sorting algorithms to use instead in your own program, but this should work fine here. In selection sort, we start at the beginning of the list and then check all of the elements of the list to find which element should be at the beginning of the sorted list. Then we swap that element with the first element, which puts the correct element at the beginning. We then repeat this process again, but starting with the second element to find which element should be second, and then again to find the third element, and so on. To code this in C++, we'll use a for loop to loop through all of the elements of the array. 
Then in this for loop, we'll make a second for loop that loops through all of the elements beginning at the element that we are on in the first for loop. This second for loop will find the index of the element we want to swap. We can do this by storing the index of the element we currently think is the first element in a local variable called swap index, and then checking in the second for loop to see if any of the other elements should come before it using the is less than operator. If an element is less than the current swap element, then we update swap index accordingly. Now, after this nested for loop runs, swap index should point to the string we want to swap with, so we can just perform the swap. Then, after all of the for loops have run, we should have an alphabetically sorted array of strings. Now when we save a game, we can simply call our alphabetize function on our saved games array to put everything in alphabetical order. Let's also use this function when we load from the file directory when the game launches, and also when we save the file directory when we exit. These shouldn't really be necessary since everything should already be in alphabetical order anyway. However, redundancy can sometimes be a good idea in these types of situations, just in case something went wrong or didn't work the way we expect it to. One more feature that I would like to add is a delete feature. This will allow the user to get rid of save files they don't want or need anymore. Let's add a delete command to our game loop. We'll check to see if the user provided a file name, and if so, we'll remove that file name from the game directory. We'll do this by looping through the file directory to check if that file name exists. If we find it, we'll enter another loop that will move all of the other file names up the directory by one space, and then we'll decrement the num saves variable. When we delete a file from the directory, let's also physically remove it from our computer's hard drive. We can do this by using the remove function, which is part of the C standard IO library. This is an older library from the C language, which is the language that C++ is based on. Luckily, C is fully backward compatible with C++, so all of the old C features and libraries still work in C++ programs. Let's include C standard IO in our program, and then in the delete command, we will call the remove function to remove the file from our system's hard drive if it exists. Now if we start a game, then save it, then exit the program, we should see in our file folder that we have a saved game and our saved directory. If we now launch the game again and delete our old save file, it should also get deleted from our computer's file folder. Now we have a complete working file directory that allows the user to save their own games and access them later. However, there's still a few problems to address. For example, the file directory only gets saved if the user runs the exit command. It would be nice if we could make the file directory and the autosave files get saved no matter what, even if the user manually exits without running the exit command. Also, what if the user wants to save more than 1,000 save files for some reason? It would be nice to expand the saved games array to accommodate that. We'll fix all of this in the next video. Until then, feel free to play around with this program and see what you might want to add to your own version of it. Be sure to share your ideas and progress in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.